Pastor hit me last minute, so. <laughs> Amen. I'm really excited to preach to you guys. Uh, I always like when I preach, you know. I love preaching. All right, if you could please just turn your Bibles to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 4. The book of Mark, chapter 4, and uh, we're going to read verses... Uh, we're going to start at verse 35, and we're going to work our way down to 41. Mark, 30, uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and we're going to read. <clears throat> and the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, what manner of man is, uh, is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now, I don't want to keep you guys in here long. Uh, I'm, I'm timing myself. I want to respect the time, you know, and so uh, Amen. I'm pretty sure you guys are busy. You got to go watch, you know, go home and watch The Price is Right after this. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I just want to, I pray it's a blessing to you. And uh, this is something that the Lord laid on my heart. And so sometimes in our lives, we'll have storms that come out of nowhere when we least expect them. Amen. Whether it be from heartbreak, losing someone in our life, health problems, praying for the lost loved ones that keep rejecting the truth, that prodigal son or daughter that ran off, unexpected difficulties or just things that are out of our control in our lives. Mm -hmm. There are storms in life that God causes in our lives to cause us to grow our faith and trust in Him more. Mm -hmm. There are storms that we inflict on ourselves and storms that other people cause. And here you are, in the middle of it all, you start to question whether God cares to act, and when will He act to help you in what you are going through. Maybe the Lord is trying to teach you something in the midst of the storm. There are probably things about yourself you are not aware of that need fixing, and only in the storms the Lord reveals the truth about yourself that you don't like. Maybe there's bitterness that you're still holding on to over something that happened years ago, or perhaps you refuse to change certain behaviors and habits for Christ's sake. You make excuses of, that's who I am, and that's how I am. Cast that part of yourself into the, in, the, in the sea and let it drown. You see, brethren, it's in the dark and heavy tempest and is when God is working. Don't anchor yourself in the wrong place. Anchor yourself on the captain of the ship. He will carry you to the other side. Lord God, I just want to give you all glory and honor, Lord. Lord, I can't preach this message without you, not by my power, but by your power, Lord God. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit, Lord God. Cleanse me with, with your holy blood, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you uh, pray that this message is a blessing to the hearers, Lord God. I understand we're all, we're all going through something, Lord, but uh, help us praise you in, amongst the pain, Lord God, and just give you all the glory that's due in your name, Lord God, for this must happen for us to grow, Lord God. And I just pray whoever's going through something here right now, I pray that you can minister unto them, Lord. Lord, as long as you get all the glory, Lord. Lord, I love you and I fear you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, the first point is the storm's sudden appearance. The storm's sudden appearance. Let's go back to verse 37 in the book of Mark. The Bible says, and there arose a great storm. It just happened. It just out of nowhere, and there arose. It doesn't say the forecast that it was going to be stormy. It just, and there arose. <laughs> Sometimes that's how life is. You're not asking for the storm. It just comes out of nowhere. You know, and uh, storms come when you least expect them. And when they hit, boy, do they hit hard. It takes the, I mean, it takes the breath out of me, at least. I don't know about you guys, but we are living in the last days. And Christians are getting spiritually worn out in this world. It seems like it all just suddenly happens out of nowhere. It just suddenly happens that someone just leaves church. It was, it was just, and there arose. They just arose and left. So that's just a storm that is in their life because of whatever it is that they have. And you'll have storms that will want you to quit your Bible reading. You'll have storms that want you to quit your prayer life. You'll have storms in life that it, 
that'll get you to quit street preaching or whatever it is that you, you know, the Lord has called you to do that you know you're supposed to do, but you don't do it. A storm to get you to quit soul winning. And to be honest, at this point, I'm just waiting for the rapture to happen. I don't care about the Lambo. Where's Brother Sweet? I don't care about the Lambo, you know. <laughs> I mean, I want it, but I don't want it anymore, you know. <laughs> it's not about the Lambo. It's about the lamb. Amen? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, that? that's good, huh? <laughs> Obviously, I'm talking to save people here, but how do you handle the storms when you're lost? You know, uh, it's interesting when you see like a family like lose their kid. Like, how, how do you how do you tell them to manage that storm in their life? Or just think positive thoughts. You know, like that's the lost world. With their philosophies think positive thoughts. Like Norman Vincent Peale, his book. I was lost at that time when I was looking at the audio book, but. There's no positive thought in the storm. You have to have somebody managing that storm. And only the Lord can help you through that storm. Amen. You know, uh, there's a couple storms in my life that have happened that, I mean, led me to get saved. I mean, but there's uh, some storms in my life that had to happen for me to change my character, my behavior, to grow for God. One of the biggest storms I had was my uncle's suicide. It was, I mean, it feels like forever now, but it was like many years ago. I was in high school and... I remember, uh, it's funny how like memories just happen all the time, but I was uh, in my room and I just hear wailing and crying in the living room. And my mom and my dad, they just start crying, like, what's going on? My, I was, uh, my mom made uh, lasagna that day, so I was eating it, so I was like, what's going on? So I got in the living room and some lady called my, uh, my dad and said, uh, yeah, you know, uh, your, uh, your wife's brother got into a car accident. And so I don't know why my mom thought, she goes, no, he didn't, you're lying. She starts crying over the phone. She goes, you're lying. He had, to, he had to kill himself. He killed himself, didn't he? He killed himself. And the lady said, no, he didn't. He just, he got into a car accident. You just need to come here and deal with some financial issues. So she goes to fly to Michigan. I'm just kind of thinking, you know, not, you know this, I'm not really thinking much about this, but I, uh, I remember as, as a lost man, I was I agnostic at the time. I sat, I got, I was just sitting down in my chair and I just prayed to God. I said, God, if you're real, I want my uncle to be okay. That's all I said. I didn't say much of a prayer. I didn't say, I didn't end it in Jesus' name. I didn't know nothing. My mom comes back a week later, and she just says, uh, she walks into my room. I don't know, I was in my room doing something, and she just says, yeah, your uncle died. And I just kind of like, it kind of just all hit me. She goes, but it wasn't a car accident. And I'm like, in that moment, I just knew there had to be a God. There had to be something. There had to be something that I can take this pain away. Another storm in my life that happened was, uh, on my way to Vegas, after the whole thing went down a year later, I had to visit my uncle. He lives in uh, Nevada, and so uh, we were there just visiting. And my sister was sitting, we were in the van, my sister just complaining about stomach pains. She goes, my stomach really hurts. So we went to a gas station, maybe she needs to just eat something or whatever, but she just complained about hurt in her stomach. We didn't even spend three days at my uncle's house, and we just had to leave because she says, I can't handle the pain. She was bedridden, she couldn't even walk. So. We, they go to the hospital after we come back to California, and they found a 10-pound tumor wow. growing in her. Wow. And um, <clears throat> they had to basically like tear her apart, like the rib cage open, move the organs out the way, just so they could remove this thing. The thing is, it was not cancerous, which is a good thing, but the problem was it, the reason she was f feeling all this pressure was because it was about to burst. Mm. And if it would have bursted, she would have died. Mm. And I remember in the living room by myself when no one was in the house, when they went to go get do the surgery, I got down on my knees, I was a lost man. I said, God, if you're real, let her live. Mm -hmm. But it's good to know that now I know I have a Savior who lived through storms that I have lived through yes. to help me through what I have been through. But his storms were much greater than mine. Yeah. See, he died for my sins and the sins of the world. That's a greater storm than I can handle. Let's look at verse 36. Verse 36. We're going to look at the near the end of the verse, and there were also with him other little ships. And I always wonder what these other little ships were. You know, I, I always wonder, like, what, what are these little ships? I thought they are just surrounding the ship as they're, they're going, but you see, I was on the wrong ship. I was wrong by myself, mm -hmm. relying on the little ships of my good works, mm -hmm. the little ships of my self-righteousness, the little ships of my sin that were sinking deep within. But bless God, I'm now saved. I'm on the captain of my salvation ship now. In verse 37, in verse 37, the Bible says, And the waves 
beat into the ship so that it was now full. The waves of life are heavy. The troubles drown you in sorrow. And it feels like that ship you are on right now is about to sink because you cannot handle the pain no more. You cannot handle the sorrow. I was without hope and without God, but praise the Lord for his mercies that he used the storms of my life to get me saved. And now I am on the right ship of the captain of my salvation. Aren't you grateful for the storms in your life that happened? I mean, don't get me wrong. There are storms that got you saved, but there are storms that got you right with God, and those feel a lot better. When you get right with God, it's a, it, that sweet fellowship is restored, and I couldn't ask for anything more. I don't want nothing else than that. You see, brethren, the storm's sudden appearance is necessary. Why is it necessary? Because you may have gotten a little too comfortable in whatever it is that you're doing. It needed to happen for you to revert your attention back to the captain of the ship. Don't look at the fancy islands and the, the treasures that might be on them. Trust me, it's all sinking sand. The second point is the storm's necessity. The storm's necessity. I did a little research on why storms are necessary, I guess in an earthly way. <laughs> uh, and here's what, I, here's what I found. They serve a natural role in our ecosystem that merits acknowledgement. While their impact varies depending on the storm's personality and the landscape, hurricanes and tropical storms overall can help, one, keep the Earth's temperature in balance, help combat drought, and three, help shape the landscapes they pass through. But how do you relate this in your life? Well, let's see. The reason the storm is needed in your life is these three things. Just like we read in, uh, I guess, the earthly storms. It helps keep you balanced. Are you hot or are you cold or are you lukewarm? You can't be all three together. Either you're one or you're the other. You can't be all three. Two, it helps combat the drought in your heart. Your heart perhaps has gotten hard towards the things of God and it needs a storm for cleansing. You see, only in the storms is when you truly grow. See, the Lord has to break down the soil of your heart because it's too hard. It's too, it, you, can't, you can't plant seeds on dry ground. He needs to water that, water that heart of yours through trial and tribulation because he knows that's the only way you learn. And then the seeds began to plant. And then you'll see them bear much fruit if you abide in him. The third thing is it helps shape the landscape of your character to become better than you are now. And God is trying to show you something lacking in you. He has to break you down and build you back better than what you are right now. The Bible says rejoice in all things. Rejoice in the storm. The disciples here weren't even rejoicing. They were too focused on the storm because they took their eyes off the Lord. When you take your eyes off the Lord, the storm feels a lot bigger. But I think they're forgetting whose ship they're on. My third point, the peace in the storm. The peace in the storm. Let's read verse 38. Verse 38. And the Bible says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep, on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? It seems like that with us too, you know, <laughs> when you're in the middle of a storm, it just feels like God's silent, you know. It feels like God's not there, or you, uh, you know, you have those moments where you just cry, your sleep, uh, cry yourself to sleep at night, or uh, you're just crying in your prayers, or you're just, you're re reading your Bible, just seems like, man, I just... Like, it's hard to read your, the Word of God in the middle of a storm because it just seems like you don't know what, you're, what to do anymore. Like, is the Word of God even, is it, is it an, even enough? Is the Word of God enough? As you, uh, if we analyze this verse much further, the disciples get very emotional and question the Lord. And sometimes we also question the Lord. Well, why is this happening in my life? Or why did you allow my uncle to take his life? Or why did you allow my sister to go through this thing? Or but you have to understand, the captain knows what he's doing. Yes. Yes. It seems like, you know, don't, don't push him out of the way and start, taking the, start driving the ship your, your way. It's not, you're going you're gonna to sink ship. Yes. <laughs> you're going to sink ship if yes. you do it your way. He knows what he's doing. He was merciful to me as a lost man. What makes you think he's not going to help you now that you're his child? Yes. Carest thou not that we perish? You see, they say that because he delayed. He delayed, like, and sometimes when, uh, due to his delay in acting in the storm, 
And then we ask, uh, ask that of the Lord too. What is God taking so long in helping me in the middle of the storm? Mm -hmm. The thing is, brothers and sisters, something that God has showed me personally in my life these past couple months is God is trying to speak to you through His Word. Yeah. He's trying to show you something about yourself that you probably don't understand and will never understand if and only if you have to go through that storm. Mm -hmm. No one has ever been through a storm and came out the same. Yeah. That's why, if you came out the same, is gonna <laughs> he's going to keep you in it. For, you're no, there's no coming out. <laughs> he's going to keep you in it until you finally understand what he's trying to tell you. There are days when you pray and give it to God, but it still hurts. Whatever it is that you're going through, I, you know, we're all going through something. We're all going through something. I'm not trying to, be, I'm not trying to you know, uh, entice your flesh into some tearjerker of a message. I'm not trying to do that. We're all going through something. And it's okay. There are days when you pray to God, and it still hurts, and that's okay. It's okay to feel the pain and grieve what you're feeling. Absorb it. Feel it. It's, there's nothing wrong. Don't neglect it. Don't run from the pain. Uh, uh, Jonah ran away from what the Lord... Uh, he got into pain because of the storm he caused on his own life. Don't run from the Lord when he's trying to help you. Don't run from God when he... You'll end up putting a, st a storm bigger if you did it your way than the one that he was going to put you through. But pause for a minute and quit looking at your hurts and fears but see what the Lord is trying to show you. Is he the Lord of your ship, or did you make yourself the captain? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think we can drive the ship because, uh, well, because we've been on the ship for a long time, so we've seen how the Lord does. I, I guess maybe I can do it the same way too. Mm -hmm. But you're forgetting that you're a servant on that ship, not the captain. Yeah. If you let the captain drive you to the desired destination, you, won't, you will not end up shipwrecked. Just like in, in the book of Acts, Apostle Paul, when he was with the, with, the, with the Roman soldiers, they didn't heed to his command. The ship sunk because they wanted to do it their way. Quit relying on thy ways and relying on the Lord's ways. Verse 39, let's read. Let's continue in the, in the book of Mark. The Bible says, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Go to Psalm chapter 107. Psalm 107. Man, I love this book. Amen. I never get tired of reading the Bible. I mean, Amen. whenever you ask the Lord, Lord, show me something, He'll show it to you. Amen. You just have to be willing to receive. Psalm 107, and we're going to read verse 25. We're going to start to 25. We're going to work our way down to 31 also. For He commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind. You see... He's the one that brought the storm, which lifteth up, uh, lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. Sounds like us, doesn't it? <laughs> they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Are you at your wit's end, Christian? Whatever you're are you at your wit's end? Are you tired of praying for that lost loved one? I'm praying for my sister's salvation. It gets tiring sometimes. Man, I, should I stop? I'm at my wit's end here. But look what the next verse says. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. Amen. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Sounds like what's happening in Mark, doesn't it? Verse 30. Then are they glad, because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. O oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of, of men. Amen. Let's go back to Mark. It's funny, I, I, happened, uh, I bumped into the song by accident too. And I was like, huh, that's interesting how it's almost like he's preaching in Mark chapter 4. Seems like the Lord is there. And the Lord is there in the midst of the storm. But you can't take your eyes off of him. You have to keep your eyes off of him or you're going to sink like Peter. Let's read verse 40. Verse 40. And he said unto them, Why? Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? That's a very interesting thing that the Lord is always questioning the disciples. If you ever notice in the book of the, uh, in the, in the, book of the Bible, <laughs> in the Bible, <laughs> he always puts his disciples through something to get them to question the Lord, but they question him internally. See, he, wanted to, he, wanted, he, put, he brought this storm he brought it because he was trying to teach them something in the midst of it. And he was trying to reveal something 
uh, uh, to them that their heart was keeping secret, but he knew what it was. What is this? The storm Jesus was concerned about was the one in their hearts. They feared what was going on around them and did not have any faith in Jesus. When you're in the midst of the storm, do you have faith in Jesus? Or do you have faith that you're going to come out and uh, just like it says in verse 35, let us pass over unto the other side. You think you're going to make it to the other side that the Lord has called you to? Or do you not have faith and fear? So perhaps the Lord brought a storm into your life to bring up something about yourself that you might not know or understand because unless he put you through that storm, then you finally understand, oh, this is what I am. And God had to bring me through storms of my life to get me to understand that, yes, I am a sinner. And without the Lord, I mean, life without the Lord, I mean, that's, it's pointless. What's, what's the point of living life knowing you're going to go straight to hell? What was the, I mean, it's like, it's so simple. The plan, the plan of salvation is so simple. You know, it's so funny. When I got saved, it's so simple. Like, it was not even that hard to get saved. I just believed with my heart, and that's all it took. That's all it took. I didn't rely on my own ways. I didn't uh, say, well, hold on, let me, let me rely on my own good works. Don't get me wrong. We all like to think of ourselves as righteous. But I knew I, I have come at my wit's end, just like it said in Psalm, and I knew I had to call upon the Lord. You see, brethren, the Lord uses the storm to bring out how they actually thought of him. They didn't have faith in him. They just thought he was just a man like they were. That's why they feared in verse 31, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? Even the wind and sea obey him. They didn't know him as this, I mean, the son of God yet. They didn't understand his power. They didn't understand who he is. They just tagged along with him thinking he's just another prophet. They doubted whether he'll actually help them. They had more faith that they might die in the storm and not in the one whom the wind and seas obey. And maybe that's what the Lord might be trying to show you. You're in the storm, but you don't have enough faith in him to give you peace that passes all understanding in the midst of the storm. It's time to examine yourself in the light of God's word and understand that when God is putting you through storms, it's for your own good. Not because he's trying to hurt you because he's a God just trying to start trouble or nothing like that. He's trying to help you. He wants you to grow. He wants you to see you grow. And without storms, without pain, without affliction, without trauma, without any of these things, you cannot grow. Abide in him and he will abide in you. How are you abiding? Are you heavenly abiding? Or are you carnally abiding? What kind of abiding are you doing today, Christian? To conclude, when sudden storms come into our lives, you have to understand they are necessary storms for your growth, to grow your faith in the Lord, to pass over unto the other side the Lord is taking you in the midst uh, in your life. In the midst of the storms, sometimes God puts you through. He's trying to get you to a different destination, and that destination is going to require new habits, a new mindset, and a stronger prayer life, and better fellowship with Him. But it's in the storm is when God is working. So let go and let God work in you, and don't resist Him. And only then will you have that peace that passeth all understanding. Lord God, I just want to thank you for the message here today, Lord. I just pray whoever uh, is going through a storm right now, Lord God, I, I am whoever, whoever is going in a storm right now, Lord, I just pray that you help them, Lord. I pray that you give them that peace that passeth all understanding, Lord, because without you, where, where shall we go, Lord? I just want to thank you for this church service. I pray for the pastor. I pray for Lord God for his safety. I pray for Penny. I pray for her salvation, Lord. I pray that you work in, a heart, uh, in her heart, Lord God. I pray that you, Lord God, you probably bring her in a storm, Lord God, to get her saved, Lord before it's too late, Lord. I pray for all, all our lost loved ones, Lord. Lord, I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you feel the Lord spoke to you, uh